<laughs> Welcome to Rooted Cosmic Soul. This is a um, Transmuting the Eye episode. And I want to welcome you here. I want to thank you for arriving. I'm really hoping that um, this is helpful, useful to you and your journey. And um, so Transmuting the Eye is about releasing the tie that binds um and it's it's a it's a time that i'm going to explore an idea right a bind and then the idea of transmuting the eye as it relates to that bind and i'm defining transmuting the eye as i'm going to read it to you so that we get it right perfectionism. <laughs> I'm going to read it because I like the definition and maybe a little bit so that I get it right. But anyway, transmuting the I, I and E-Y-E-I is the practice of changing, altering and lifting the veil on the external and internal exertion of oppression, suppression and control on the 3D experience. And we're doing it from the I. So it's, you know, my 3D experience, your 3D experience. You then release your energy from it and engage in a 5D perception, or um, you could call it, you know, you release your energy from the bind, uh, which allows you to have a more true and authentic divine self experience. And so it's work that I've been doing for a while on myself and some of my clients, and it, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> it's really, it's really, uh, it's really helped me. So I want to share that with you folks. And today I'm going to talk about, um, the, the bind that I'm going to talk about today is, uh, productivity and self worth. And, um, so yeah, it can be, this is a, you know, a little bit of a touchy subject, I think, cause it touches on some really tender parts of ourselves. Uh, but I, but I want to share this because it's definitely something that I have worked on and am working on. And I have quite a few clients too, that I think are working on it. So I'm friends, you know, uh, so this idea of productivity and self-worth sort of, you know, how can it show up? Um, I think a really good place to look at where it can show up in your life is like this bind this connecting my worth to how much I produce. It can particularly be hard, hard or harsh in a company at your job. If, um, your position or your value is really connected to how much are you producing your productivity level? How much can you push out in the hours that they pay you for, or, you know, if your salary, just in the hours that you're there. And so, um, it's really wrapped around this idea of status, power, and authority. And so you want to look at your relationship to those things, particularly if your worth is connected to, or your understanding of worth, your definition of worth is connected to class, like one's class status. Um, value is based on what I own, not really who I am, but what I own. Um, and my job is who I am. And, um, I haven't necessarily thought about or understand the idea of human sovereignty and what that means to be sovereign as a human being, um, to have an understanding of free will and choice. Um, I'm not talking about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. I'm not talking about taking responsibility off of society. Um, or individuals or groups of folks who create harm, who cause harm, who create systems at harm. That's not what I'm talking about. They, I believe they do need to be held responsible. What 
I've started thinking about is like, well, we live in a world where it feels like they're not really being held responsible. So am I supposed to just be at their whims? You know, am I supposed to just believe that the number of widgets I throw out there determine my value to society? I don't think so. I, I disagree with that. So um, it also shows up in like, it can also show up in overworking so, you know, you're tired, you know, you want to go home, particularly for salaried folks, you know, you're tired, you want to go home, work is never going to end, it'll be there tomorrow, you're not a brain surgeon, someone's not on a surgery table. Um, and so if those things are true, and you're still working, that's something to look into in terms of connecting productivity to self value. So when I said this thing about like, I, I'm not talking about a pull yourself out by your bootstraps mentality, or that um, all responsibility is on you. I, I, I also want to mention that I, I, it's not lost on me that a lot of the ways in which we as humans are connecting our self-worth to productivity is a result of capitalism and our indoctrination by capitalism to consume and to allow the system to consume us. Um, consume our art, consume our mind, our thoughts, making money off of every little thing that we do. Um, and so I think that that's true for all humans, regardless of identity. I think that there, I want to mention that I do understand in particular for folks who have identities um, that have experienced that are extremely targeted and have experienced really extreme forms of societal systemic construct harm, such as colonialism, imperialism, um, enslavement, forced migration. And for generations, right? We're talking about these are things that folks have been experienced for generations and uh, the, the latest generation, this, the impacts of climate change. Um, and so I do understand that for some of us, our survival has depended on moving like our worth is connected to productivity because the system is telling us that it is. And so I'm not here judging any of that. I'm here to say there are other perspectives that we can tap into. And, you know, rooted cosmic soul is for the person who wants to root their cosmic soul. And part of that means shadow work. It means releasing the tie that minds. It means transmuting oppression, suppression, and control, both those that are put upon me and those that I have indoctrinated. I have become a complicit to because of generations, like it, 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 it's just the way of being. And for some of us, there's certain ways of being we've had to engage in order to survive or to find what we um, define as success. And so uh, this is an opportunity to just think about it differently because connecting productivity to self-worth often in my experience leads to burnout, fatigue, um, disinterest in anything, feeling lost, feeling disconnected, um, lacking joy. Um, and so those are the ways that it can show up. Um, things that you can do like tangible sort of, um, logical, tangible, concrete ways, what I would call yang ways, <laughs> the mind, um, is doing that work of just starting to look at how am I connecting um, my worth to my output and thinking about where did that come from? Um, so what did I see when I was a child? What was I told when I was a child? Um, it, you could even really, I was thinking about it now, you could even really think about like now, like, yeah, obviously you're being told <laughs> your worth by how much you show up at work, um, and how much you're getting paid. But the things that we put up with, you know, the things that we will put up of the, 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 the management styles we'll put up with the pay rates we'll put up with, uh, the pay days, the pay hours stems from the things we learned as a child about what we're worthy of and what we're not. And so starting to look at those things can be really helpful. And I always recommend folks look at it with a lot of grace and compassion. I'm not looking at those things to judge myself. I'm looking at those things 
to see what works and what doesn't work. And so that's a tool that you can really use when you start unpacking this stuff. So looking at my behavior and just sitting with that of like what's working and what's not working for me, not looking at it as I'm good if I do this, I'm bad if I do that, um, I'm right if I do this, I'm wrong if I do that. Looking at it of this is working with this is working for me. This is how it's working for me. This is not working for me. This is how it's not working for me. And then what do I want to do with it? Uh, in order to do that, another tool is breathe, slow down, see clarity. And so it really requires in a world in which urgency is dominant and um, pushed upon us so that we don't have time to actually think clearly, uh, it becomes really important to use the breath to slow down. And then um, seek clarity. I always like to tell folks, like you want to seek clarity first from inside. So what do I need? What do I need? Um, what is happening for me? How are my beliefs or behaviors based on my awareness of who I am? Some identity pieces that I've taken on um, that are determining that. And I love identity, but also identity is a construct. And so you know, that'll be another episode, you know, we can start thinking about the ways in which we have been given parts of our identity by our culture, our people, generations before us, and they worked then, but they don't necessarily work now. And so starting to look at those things and the tools there are introspection, self-awareness, uh, being transparent and vulnerable with the self. Um, when I move to the more yin thing, so intuition, feeling, spirit aspects, I, I will be honest that, so what I did was, um, I sat and I meditated about this and just really thought about what were the things that I wanted to share, um, around productivity and self-worth from a more, um, what I call like a more holistic, I'm thinking about it, but I'm feeling it from my heart to find that balance between my yin and my yang. Um, and so what came to me was we can start looking at illusions of self, like the illusions of who I think I am. Um, cause a lot of times that does come out of when you live in such a hyper capitalist society, it is related to what I can give others. So it happens from work, but then also sometimes in families, same thing. Like was I, was my worth determined on how I showed up for folks? I didn't just to get to show up. I had to show up a certain way. And if I showed up in a way that was allowed, um, I was praised, which can then start making me correlate that to worthiness as, as a human. If I am a certain way, I'm worthy for, of breath. I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy, um, of time. Uh, another thing is, and this is a little bit, I think it crosses the line between both is abundance and scarcity. So just starting to look at what is my understanding of these terms and the way they show up in my life. Um, we live in a society that pushes the idea of scarcity, that there's not enough for everyone that if I have, you don't have. Um, it's so opposite to, to nature. <laughs> uh, nature lives in a world of abundance and there, and, and in my world, in the spirit world, there is more than enough to go around. It's just a shift in understanding of, of what the enough is and really what is it that we need? Um, just looking at my notes. So I already said this, but I'm going to say it one more time because it came up during my meditation. Um, how did I, or do I define a human's worth and worthiness? Right. And what does that mean on how I see myself? So a good question the other day, I was thinking about this and a good question is like, think about, or a scenario rather good scenarios. Think about two individuals, an individual who, um, works, has a home, uh, whatever that home looks like has a home that we consider, uh, you know, like an apartment or a house they rent or own it, um, has nice clothes, has a car, has food to eat. And then an individual who is uh, houseless, who maybe doesn't have the nicest clothes, is hungry, um, 
and really sit with yourself. This is where the tool of transparency and vulnerability can become really important. Sit with yourself. You don't have to tell anybody else, but really what comes to mind when you think about these two individuals and their worth to society. And that is going to give you an idea of beliefs because I think many of us would tell, would quickly say, oh, they're both worthy humans. <laughs> But when we sit with ourselves and get really, really honest and really think about the things that are in the back of the mind, and I'm saying this because I have to do that work as well, less so now because I've been doing it, but when I first started it, I was really alarmed with some of the bullshit that was in my mind about someone who was houseless or looked dirty on the street or, you know, I saw them on the street and I thought they looked dirty like even that language, right? So really starting to unpack that um, can help detach our worth from everything. And in particular in this conversation, productivity, uh, because you are worthy simply by breath, period. You're worthy human being. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of connection. You're worthy of not experiencing harm. You're worthy of food, water, shelter, clean water, shelter, community. You're worthy of these things, regardless of how much money you make, what car you drive, what house you live in, what family you were born into, who you love, etc. Um, some of the shadow work I was thinking about that you could think about was, uh, particularly related around, um, when you're sitting in that quiet time, you can think about when you, that scenario that I gave you, where in your body did you feel most activated? Um, and paying attention to where in the body you felt most activated, like you felt your stomach got a little tight when you thought about your actual answer to that, um, ears got hot, like locate it in the body as much as you can. And what I like to do is to figure out what, where's the closest chakra, <laughs> chakra energy point and knowing where the, um, what those chakras sort of, what energy those chakras tend to rotate for us or highlight for us or clean out for us and gives me an idea of what parts of me I might want to be in conversation with to, um, detach my worth from anything. Um, because I want to, th that, that info, it, it's info that can be transmuted. That's, a, that's the transmuting process of taking that info and then, um, processing it. Um, other thing that, uh, there's a concept that I guess it's kind of, I think it's a little bit between the yin and the yang. It's called imminent power. If you've watched any of my videos, you know, I bring it up all the time because um, it's something that the construct constantly wants us to think doesn't exist. Choice, free will, imminent power, power, right? Power within oneself, sovereignty. Um, again, people like to derail these conversations because they think that because the choices I have suck means I don't have choices. That's not what, <laughs> um, yes, there are many people on this planet based on the construct, capitalism is one of the problems, white supremacy, patriarchy, that all the choices before them suck and they're still choices. And there's a power that can be taken from the construct, uh, when one starts really shifting their mind to understand that. Um, Another thing that the thing that came to me clearly was someone needed to hear this was producing is not who we are. So as humans producing is not who we are. It's not our function. Uh, but this current overculture has told us that your function is to produce for someone to make money. Um, your function is to produce so that you can have food. Your function is to produce so you can have safety. Your function is to produce. So production can pro create those things, but that's not your function. That, that, the, then those things are nice, but it's not who you are. It's not, you're not, uh, you don't get to breathe because you produce. And then I was kind of like in a haze and I just wrote the main issues with 
connecting productivity with our self-worth is that where there is something oh I, actually I can't read this <laughs> I was really in the meditation sorry folks um let me see if I can remember Just give me a second see if I can remember okay so it was just a reminder for someone that made need to hear this the main issue with connecting because some folks might be like well who cares if we connect productivity to self-worth and one of the main issues when you connect productivity with self-worth is that um where there is something that the system the construct the matrix our job someone in our life um praises us for producing something or um and values it because it brings it brings your energy it helps you use your energy to produce something for them to create something for them we can mistake this as our purpose as our path right therefore our worth and so it gets really sticky, um, particularly the young, I think the younger we were when we started putting this stuff together. Um, so there's that, there's that. The biggest thing I want to leave you with is just to consider what is your relationship between productivity and self-worth? Uh, and to remember that you're worthy simply because you were born and to regard that you are um, worthy, perfect, and whole exactly as you are and exactly as you are not. No matter how hard that may be hard, hard, how hard that may be to hear or what that activates and not all stuff is important. It doesn't change the fact that you are worthy simply because you are. So I'm going to close with, um, the last thing I did was ask spirit that, um, if someone showed up, uh, and there was, you know, uh, what did someone who's still here, who showed up, who's listening to this needs to hear, um, in terms of helping them release the bind of, uh, connecting productivity to their self-worth um, and I uh, pulled from the deck called the shaman's dream oracle it's one of my favorites it's card number 38 it's many masks the authentic self and I'm gonna read it from the book this is for someone who arrived and spirit knew you would arrive sort of like this is the moment where my higher self and your higher self doing high fives Many masks, the authentic self energizing internal allies, a conscious shift. We live in a world where everyone we see wears a mask. We wear these masks to cover up and protect who we really are. We learn to do so because we've been conditioned to try to appear a certain way to fit into society. Masks allow us to belong, so we remain within the confines of what is expected. Masks are not inherently bad. Rather, they provide context and structure for our personalities and soul's expression. Some of us might believe that a particular mask fit, fixed and hardened onto us is our permanent face. We forgot that we are living beings with a multitude of faces enabling us to experience a fuller, more vibrant world. Your authentic essence doesn't want to be constrained by others' expectations anymore. Now is the time to strip away the mask you've accepted and discover who you really are. A new self is emerging, and your perception changes as you adopt new ways of being. Right now, it's really important to allow yourself to experiment, to experience the world in all its myriad potentials and possibilities. Try on different masks and let yourself be fluid and curious. How will you know what you love and what will resonate with you if you don't take off the mask you've always worn and test drive some new ones? Your authentic essence will never change. It will only express itself differently through those, through these optional selves. I'm gonna read that sentence again. Your authentic essence will never change. 
it will only express itself differently through these optional selves. Through trial and error, you discover more and more about who you want to become. What would it feel like to explore this side of you? Anything is possible if you're willing to open up to your potential. You truly can move beyond the barriers that society has set. Use your imagination and step into the magic. Ashe. So I'm not going to lie. When I was sitting and meditating and then I pulled that card, you know, I already knew what I was going to be talking about. And I was like, all right. Yes. Thank you, higher self. <laughs> Spirit was with us. I asked for, you know, our ancestors named and unnamed, known and unknown of this lifetime and other lifetimes. Spirit guides, angels, um, all of which in the light to guide us and to help me figure out a message that someone who was here really needed to hear. Um, so I hope that happened. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and that is Rooted Cosmic Soul. Releasing the tie that binds, transmuting the eye. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude.